morning we're going to take a look at the Keyword Study Bible, the KJV, and it is the AMG Publishers. A lot of people really like this book and find it interesting because of the Hebrew and Greek concordance that is located in the back, and it's the same numbers as the Strong's Concordance, and it also has some English grammar helps in the back, and just various little things in its concordance. See, it says concordance there. So it's got a separate concordance, and it's got the um, Strong's Dictionary with AMG's word studies, but they call that Strong's Dictionary often um, the concordance. And this actually has really good notes in the back. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to be talking to you about what the world means when it says world. All right, so um, world is often is usually almost always translated cosmos. Um, I can look into that a little more just to verify, but we have words like um, cosmos is an English word too. And we have um, cosmopolitan, and cosmopolitan means a person who is accepted anywhere they go. And it's, it's funny, they actually named that magazine. <laughs> they, they properly named that, the magazine this because the Bible tells us to be sanctified and to be separate and to live holy lives. So whenever the Bible talks about the world, most of the time it's talking about the arrangement of mankind. And we know like with social class stratification where the the rich stay rich and the poor stay poor and um, like politics where... Um, you have to be a somebody to be involved. And if you like, if you want to eat a thousand dollar meal at one of their little um, get togethers, you have to be important. So when it's talking about cosmos, it's talking about the way that the world has arranged itself and the way that we're not supposed to be involved with that. So you see like an orderly arrangement, decoration, um, cosmo to tend or to take care of order. Um, used as a metonym for the inhabitants of the universe. So there we go, inhabitants of the universe. Figuratively and symbolically, a world of something as an aggregate, such as in James 3, 6, a world of iniquity. So there's there's different contexts and the different ways it uses it, but in, it's talking about the inhabitants of the earth, and we know that unless God causes them to repent, those inhabitants are wicked. So... <laughs> Um, we're going to open to 1 John 2 and verse 15. So 1 John 2, 15, it says, Love not the cosmos, neither the things that are in the cosmos. If any man love the cosmos, the love of the Father is not in him. So you can see from the context, it's talking about the arrangement of mankind because that's the where the wickedness is. So um, for all that is in the Cosmos, the lust of the flesh, the the way that you desire things that you that are forbidden, as it says in Genesis three, the forbidden fruit, and the lust of the eyes, you look at things that you can't have and you want them. So forbidden things to the flesh, forbidden things to the eyes, and the pride of life. And it's forbidden to be your own source of wisdom. You're supposed to look to God for wisdom. So here that's what this is saying. The, the pride of life is that you can be your own source of wisdom and people will look up to you rather than look towards God. Is not of the Father, but is of the, of the world. And the world passeth away, the cosmos passeth away, and that's cosmos too right there, but is of the cosmos. And the cosmos passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So you'll have eternal life if you start obeying God and stop looking to man. So he's simply repeating here when he says the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. He's simply repeating what had been said in um, Genesis chapter 3 when it says, when it says the woman saw that it, the tree was good for food, lust of the flesh, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, lust of the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Sophia, um, 
and like as I said, so she could be so a source of wisdom. So Adam and Eve could be their own source of wisdom, and they could be gods. So um, and God means a judge. So they were wanting to have the forbidden things of this world, which is you be your own judge. People look up to you, and then you can become rich, and you can get the want the women that you want, and the house that you want, and the cars and things like that that you want. There's three here, and that's actually a corruption of the genie, because um, the 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 three wishes that um, Satan gave her is a picture of the same thing as like what the world would think of when they say a genie, because you rub the lamp and then it gives you three wishes. Well, she got her three wishes: the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And um, so now, open with me, if you will, to Luke. Um, that pet last one was in Genesis chapter 3. Um, now we're going to look in Luke chapter 4, where Jesus is tempted. So <clears throat> we see that um, Jesus is literally hungry because it says that we're ended, the days of his fast were ended. He, he ate nothing, so he was hungry. Afterwards, he was hungry. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of Man, command this stone that it be made bread, which makes sense because... His, his flesh is hungry, so he's not going to feed the flesh. And Jesus answered him, saying, it is, is it, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. We're supposed to hunger for the things of God. And um, what we eat and what we drink and everything like that is secondary. What we should eat and drink the word of God. That's We have words like that in the English, like palatable means something that can be taken in your mouth or in your mind. So it, whether it tastes good to your mind or tastes good to your mouth, palatable can apply to both. So, And the devil, so he didn't, he didn't fulfill the loss of his flesh here. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. So now... Is the eyes. He's looking out at all the kingdoms of the world. So that he's trying to get him with the lust of the eyes. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. So the kingdom, like it says in the Lord's Prayer, the devil is trying to do the same kind of thing because he's trying to imitate God, right? The kingdom, the power, and the glory. Like that's how the Lord's Prayer ends. ends for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Because the devil wants to to be like God. If if thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. So he's going to give it to him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So we should be obedient to God, and not to the cosmopolitans the people who are accepted in this world and do the things that belong to this world. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, so he didn't fulfill the lust of his eyes up here, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep them, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed him for a season. So we see right here that the devil appeals to the flesh with the things that he does. And, um, you know, people, this is like hastening. The word of God, like it says in Isaiah, like people try to hasten God's work and they drag it around like it's sin on a wheel cart, it, it speaks of. So um, this is called climbing the ladder of success, y'all. So as we saw here, it's like, come on, you can climb the ladder of success. And rather than being content with what God has given you, people want to get there quicker. So they do things that are wicked, belonging to Satan. And Jesus said that Satan desires the things that belong to men and not the things that belong to God. That's why people do these things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And um, they jump on board with man 
and uh, wicked ways of moving ahead quickly. If there's even such a thing, because they, they try to sell it to you like there is a way to move up quickly and climb the ladder of success. But just like I said over in Genesis, that we should be relying on God and not satisfying the flesh and doing the wicked things that it takes to to move ahead in this world. And that's what he was saying is you could be God. And um, they want to shortcut it and be... Um, powerful quickly and that's how satan deceived them so okay um thanks for watching and y'all have a great day bye